Hello there and welcome. My name is Jimmy Wigman and in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, components. And more to the point I will talk about replacing the standard Jira components with the components that you find in Compass. So about a month ago I made a video about this announcement but at the time I did not have this one rolled out in my test instance. But now that I have, I would like to show you what it actually looked like and how it works. So let's jump into the test environment or to my test instance and let's show you what this one actually looked like and how it works. So here we are now in the test instance and this is my test project for a year software project. And you can see in the component section it says new here. So if I click on there you will see now that up here we will have a drop list that we didn't have before. And this drop list will then allow us to make the switch between using the, in, um, the, the regular Jira components that you have in every software project, or if you want to switch to the Compass components. So before we do that, and before we make the switch, you can see now that I have one component here called just Jira. Let's assume that this one is for, uh, for me as an administrator and to plan out the different activities I do in Jira. So I have a component here, and if I jump over then to Compass, uh, I want to show you then what that one looks like. So let's jump over to Compass very quick. And so I haven't made any connections here. This is just a test instance, so please don't be sad that you cannot see all the functionalities. Um, but you can see here down here that these are the components that we have that is connected to my team. And if I go to components here, you will see these are all the components that are available for me in Compass. Now, if you're using this one live uh, in production, you probably have a whole lot of components here and they will all be of different type and they will be of different tiers. So if I look at Jira software here, for example, then I will see that I have connected this one to a few things. It connected to the, the demo project that we just looked at. And you will have some links here that you can uh, use for it. Uh, I set it as active here and it will be a tier one system, obviously, because it is very important. And you have all the other things here. We will dive into Compass in another video, but just so you understand that uh, the components that exist are these four. So we have one for your software, one for your service management, we have a demo service, and we have Zephyr Scale as an example of an app that we have then inside of your software. So what we want to do now then is to remove uh, or actually switch over uh, from the, uh, the built-in components that we have here, and we want to use then the ones from Compass. And that is as simple as just going up here and toggle this one. And now this will take a little while with, uh, because it will now fetch the components that you have in Compass. And when you do this the first time, if you haven't actually linked any issues between the two platforms, then this one will be empty. So let's just wait for this one to load uh, so we can get this one and you will see that it will tell you that you have no connections here. So here we are now, and we will see now that this one have now completely synced. And you will see that we say that we have four software components in Compass, but none are linked to issues. And uh, so this is a good thing because if you have thousands or hundreds or dozens at least uh, of components in Compass, not all of them will be related to this project. And you don't want to bring in things that shouldn't be here. So the only way you will actually see components here from Compass is if you connect then your issues to it. So if I go to issues here, and then I will, will select, and let's take this Epic for example. And you will see now that we will have then uh, the components here. So if I click on this one, I can now connect this one to your software. And I, I can, as you can see, just like with components, I can connect it to multiple ones if I want. But now that this one is connected then, so if I go back to the project and I go to components again, now we will have a connection there and then this components will show up. And now you will see that you, what we, we get some information about the component itself, like the name, it will tell you who owns this one, what team is there. 
If you have a repository connected to it, that one will show, and it will show your dependencies and scorecards. All of these things will come then from Compass. And then if you look at the issues, then you will see how many will actually be connected to this one. So if I click on this one, then you will go to your issue search. And no, thank you, I've already seen it. And, and then you will see the list as usual. So in that way, it behaves fairly similar to how regular components are. It's just that it will be handled then in Compass rather than in your project. So let's say you have tried this one now and uh, you're not happy with it. It was terrible. It did not work at all as you want. And the only thing that you need to do to revert it is to go up here and toggle this one again. And what will happen then is that this connection will still be there, but it will not show here. And you will then get back. Uh, okay, let's do this. It will ask you why. And then when you go back, you will have the same components that you had before. So the data is still there. It is just toggled uh, when it comes to the UI. So you will not lose any information whatsoever by doing this change. And so this way it's safe to actually test it out. So that's how you can now connect your uh, components or replace your built-in components in your software with the Compass components. So I hope that one was useful for you. And uh, I will continue to show uh, these things as they roll out to my test instance. And I, if you have any questions or if there's anything more you want to see from this feature, please add a comment to it and I will extend this video with more information. But for now, this is what I had to show for you. So all that remains for me is then to wish you that you have an awesome day and a great week.